the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. It's six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. Well, let's get started. First question, tell us who you are and what you do. I'm Jim Tobin. I'm the founder of a company called Ignite Social Media that I created in 2007. So it was the first social media agency launched in the United States. And in 2015, we at Ignite spun out an influencer marketing agency called Carousel. Um, and we do influencer marketing for large consumer brands and retailers. Fantastic. Thank you. Question number two, what's the best thing about working with a team? You know, I think uh, early on what I realized when I started doing social media, I was 40 years old. It was 2007 and my, my partner in crime when it was just the two of us was about 23 years old. And I thought, well, I'm going to show her how to do this and that. And we started writing blog posts and I saw pretty quickly that her blog posts were getting more readers than mine were. And, and I, I suddenly realized, okay, maybe being 40 is not an advantage in social media marketing. Um, and so that very quickly made me realize that people of all disciplines would bring different perspectives as to what would resonate in an environment where people can choose whether or not to engage with you. And so one of the things we do intentionally with our teams is make sure you have people from different uh, backgrounds, perspectives, even people who are uh, a little more aggressive with people who are a little more conservative, um, you know, to make sure what we put out in the world is going to be received the way we intended um, and not some other way. And I think if you don't have a team, um, it's very easy to assume that the way you think is the way the world thinks. And uh, if you have to represent, you know, brands and social media and you go in with that perspective, it's going to bite you eventually. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Question number three, I hear from other team leaders that getting team members engaged can be a challenge. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think, uh, I think a person, any person wants to know a couple things that um, what, the, what the organization is doing matters and what they are doing matters. And we do social media marketing. We're not solving world hunger or anything, but um, you know, we, we try to, you know, reinvent how marketing is done in an era where people can talk back. And so that's part of it. But the other part is that anyone from an intern up to the president can have a good idea and anyone from an intern up to a president can have a bad idea. And it's really important that we have an environment in which we uh, can say those things. So anyone, including an intern, can say, I don't know, Jim, if your idea is going to fly, um, because I'd rather hear it inside the office, back when we had offices, <laughs> versus, um, you know, put it out on the web and then have the, the world tell me that sort of stuff. And so I think people will be motivated if they feel like their opinions matter and the, what they're, the work they're doing matters and they're being treated like adults. So that's the way I would like to be treated. And so that's the way I try to treat my teammates. And I think that, that would motivate me. And so I always try to flip it around and say, if somebody was treating me this way, would it motivate me or, 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 or cause me not to be motivated? Great perspectives and great insights. Thank you. Question number four, what other successful leaders, such as yourself, should be on my podcast? I think the first one who comes to mind for me is Chaz Felix. He was the founder of a company called Bronto Software, sold to, uh, I think, NetSuite, which then became, I think, part of Oracle. This is a really different thinker than I am, and I, we were in a, a group together. I met every month, and I learned so much about his the analytical perspective, the financial perspective that he brings to it. Um, he did a great job growing to a 200 plus employee company um, and really um, leading in a very different way. So I, I, like, I'd like, I like to hear his perspective to balance out mine. I think we take very different approaches. Great, thank you. Question number five, what is a piece of advice that you would give to other leaders of a team? Um, you know, I think it's to, to focus on the end goal and how to get there. Um, and, uh, and then from there, we, we try to break things into who does what by when. And that's a phrase we say all the time in our company, who does what by when. At the end of every meeting, somebody says, who does what by when? Because there's often times when people will leave meetings and think, you know, Sean's got it. No, Jim's got it. Got what exactly am I delivering? A memo, a PowerPoint, a, a video, um, by when? Um, and I think, I think those sort of uh, clear guidance as to what 
needs to be accomplished is is half the battle. The other half is an open door to raise your hand if you didn't quite understand how to get it done or a question comes up in the doing. Um, so for me, it's it's setting them up so they can be knocked down. Um, and if you don't set them up right, there's no way your team can really go through them and knock them down. That's, I love that phrase, who does what by when, thank you. Well, sixth and final question, tell us about your first job. You know, my first professional job uh, out of college was with a, was with a very well-known large insurance company. Um, and what I learned about that is that life is too short to have a job you hate. <laughs> um, you know, like a lot of people, my first job was terrible. We would, the goal was to do six month rotations in different divisions to become an assistant manager at an insurance company. And, you know, if somebody wants to do that, that, that that's fine. I just, that's, that's not where my ambitions were. And I wanted to do something that got me fired up um, every day. And that job didn't end well for me. <laughs> and, um, and it was good because I had a chance to reset myself and say, what motivates me? And um, persuasion motivates me and technology motivates me. And, um, you know, doing sort of the, the, the operational grunt work of keeping a large machine running smoothly does not motivate me. And so, you know, it was a terrible year. Uh, I like to say if I was Van Gogh, it would be my blue period. But, um, um, but you know, it, it, it did come out of it knowing, okay, if not that, then what? Um, and that led me down closer and closer to get into the marketing that I, that I still do. Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. And thanks, thanks also, Jim, for being on the podcast. How can people find you? Uh, the easiest way is probably on Twitter, at J Tobin, so J-T-O-B-I-N. Uh, of course, I'm on LinkedIn, too, but I'm not the only Jim Tobin. Uh, but so hit me up on Twitter. I'll be happy to reply. Very good. Thank you. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders share their insights. For more ideas, check us out on LinkedIn at Blue Sky Business Consulting.